following program is brought to you in living color on NBC by Ford. Ladies and gentlemen, The Ford Show. Starring... There's one thing I can't stand, it's a smart aleck kid. You're ahead in a fort of the brand. Yeah. Sweet girls live in Birmingham. No, no, they live in Memphis. M. M. E. E. M. M. P. P. H. I. S. And that's Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee. They say all the tall girls come from Dallas. No, no, they come from Memphis. They say all the short girls come from Omaha. No, no, they live in Memphis. M. M. E. E. M. Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee. Well, if you don't believe me, just take a little trip down the big muddy, the mighty Mississippi. Take a look around that happy little town. If you're looking for a little girl, you'll, you'll find, find her in hell. E. M. P. H. I. S. And that's a Memphis, Tennessee. Well, they say all the pretty girls come from Minneapolis. No, no, they come from Memphis. And all the sweet girls come from Baltimore. Ah, uh, ah, uh, they, they come from Memphis. M. M. E. E. M. M. P. P. H. I. S. And that's a Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee. And I hear all the cool girls come from Chicago. Oh, no, they come from Memphis. And all the movie stars come from Hollywood. Oh, yeah, they were born in Memphis. Oh, uh, M. M. E. E. M. M. P. So that's a Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee. Well, that's tall one, short one, sweet and fine one, little one, big ones, one of a kind one. Take your pick, they're everywhere. Standing there waiting for you. They're waiting for you. Well, good evening. Everybody up in the buggy? <laughs> you know, most people have some special thing that they do that's not really a hobby, if you know what I mean. Uh, a little thing that gives them pleasure. Now, for example, some folks are savers. They save ribbons and pieces of string and, and, and corks and uh, ticket stubs and thread spools and kraut tampers and, and <laughs> pocket lint. <laughs> it's a fact. <laughs> well, I know a fella's got a 30 pound ball of pocket lint. <laughs> He'll make a pillow out of it. Other folks are what is known as paper players. Have you ever seen them? They follow the stock market and the horse races in the papers, but they never bet money. Ever. They make what you call mind bets. 
I heard of a fellow who won $250,000 and lost his mind. <laughs> now, in my case, I'm what you call a sender away for it. <laughs> you know, all the little things, ads in the backs of magazines. When you look at magazines, all the ads are little block ads you can send away for everything in the world from horse collars in. Well, now, I can no more resist those things than Jack Park can resist an argument. <laughs> but let, let me tell you now, now here's some of the things. I've got a magazine. Here's some of the things. And I'm not going to exaggerate. I'm going to read the actual ads right out of the magazine. Now, you may be interested, anyhow. Here's some of the things that you can send away for. Uh, here's one Bonehead Skull Clock. <laughs> The skull tells time by moving the eyeballs. <laughs> Left one indicates the hour and the right one indicates the minute. It says, keep it on your night table and wake up with a start. <laughs> Wait a minute, there was another one. Oh, here, 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 here's one here. Here it is, a uh, Venus fly trap eats live flies. <laughs> Bulbs grow into exquisite house plants that catch and eat the live insect. Also eats raw beef. <laughs> or feeds normally through the roots. When that thing gets hungry, you better feed it or get out of the way. <laughs> All these things. Oh, here, here's one, here. Here, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> Decorated Easter egg shells. Laid by a little red hen. <laughs> Each shell painted by hand, punctured at both ends, and the contents blown out. <laughs> well, I guess for an extra dollar, they'd send you a course on how to become an Easter egg blower. <laughs> but all these things, you get it, and they're, they're true, you can get them in the magazines. Wait a minute, I had another. Oh, here it is. Yeah, you, you listen to this. Send for our booklet on welding for pleasure or profit. Learn meat cutting in just nine days. <laughs> Pay after graduation. <laughs> How about that? You can, she, can you see your shingle? You get a PhD in ham hocks. <laughs> now listen to this one. Where's this? I got one. Oh, oh there's a pretty place. Oh, that's a bathroom. <laughs> uh, here, plumbers and steam fitters guide. Six volumes, 2,600 pages. 3,442 diagrams and illustrations, and a free gift plunger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I've made some of you uh, send her away for us. There are a lot of fun. If you get to doing this, it'll get a hold of you. You'll never get it up. Believe me. Well, anyhow, say here's something we did just a little while back that you, uh, you may remember. Harry? Come listen, you fellows, so young and so fine, and seek not your fortune in the dark, dreary mines. It'll form as a habit and seep in your soul till the stream of your blood runs as black as the coal. It's dark as a dungeon and damp as the dew Where danger is double and pleasures a few Where the rain never falls and the sun never shines It's dark as a dungeon way down in the mine It's many a man I have known in my day Who lived just to labor his whole life away Like a fiend with his dope And a drunkard his wine A man will have lust for the lure of the mines It's dark as a dungeon and damp as the dew Where danger is double 
And pleasures are few Where the rain never falls And the sun never shines It's dark as a dungeon Way down in the mine I hope when I die And the ages shall roll My body will blacken And turn into coal Then I'll look from the door Of my heavenly home And pity the miner Dig in my bones It's dark as a dungeon And damp as the dew Where danger is double And pleasures are few Where the rain never falls And the sun never shines It's dark as a dungeon Way down in the mine Now I want you to meet a very famous foot. It belongs to Dan Jones, who won Class A. That's compact cars with standard transmission in this year's mobile gas economy run. Hello, Dan. In fact, Dan beat them all. His 1961 Ford Falcon not only recorded the greatest gas mileage of any car in the run, it smashed all previous gas mileage records for six or eight cylinder cars in the entire 25-year history of the mobile gas economy run. Dan, just exactly what was your winning mileage? 32.6 miles per gallon, Ernie. Mm -mm. That's great mileage, all right, but that foot of yours looked like it had a pretty light touch. Well, we were pretty careful because it was an economy run, but we still had to average over 40 miles an hour all the way from Los Angeles to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And that included the same kind of road conditions and driving any regular driver would encounter. Well, now, who came the closest to your 32.6 miles per gallon? It was another Falcon right behind us with uh, 31.6 miles per gallon. Well, that makes it a clear 1-2 win for Falcon. Not only that, Ernie, but both Falcons uh, recorded better mileage than any other car on the economy run. Well, Dan, you and the Falcon did a great job, and our thanks. Nice to have you with us. Well, that ought to settle it once and for all. When it comes to gas mileage, only a Falcon can beat a Falcon. 32.6 miles per gallon. That's pretty amazing for 2,500 miles of driving. The best gas mileage ever recorded by any six or eight cylinder car in the entire 25 year history of the mobile gas economy run. This winning result is certified by the United States Auto Club. And remember, the Falcon's a winner when it comes to price too, because it's America's lowest priced six passenger car. See the 61 Falcon at your Ford dealers tomorrow. When you do, then you know why we say you're ahead in a Ford all the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now it's time for you to meet our guest this evening, a handsome young fellow who's not only a fine actor and the star of Wagon Train, but he's got a great singing voice, and you're going to hear it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, a welcome back to Robert Horton. I'll tell you no lie I'll 
deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? How many times a day do I think of you? How many times a day? How many roses are sprinkled with dew? How far would I travel? Would I cry? How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? How much do I love you? I'll tell you no lie. How deep is the ocean? Gracious man. Thank well, you. it's just great. And, and while you were singing, I was looking into the audience. Yeah. And you know, it doesn't make any difference if you're carrying the guns and working in wagon train or standing here all dressed up singing a ballad, you make the ladies' hearts flutter. That's <laughs> great. You die. Right? That's very nice of you to tell me that. Yeah. Very kind. Well, yeah, but girls, I'm sorry. Bob's a newlywed. Some other bird's got him scratching corn now, boy. <laughs> How's married life? Well, Ernie, I've only been married about three months, but it's great. I bet you. It's great. Marilyn's a terrific girl, and, yeah. and boy, has she changed my life. It can happen. You know, when you're a bachelor, you have terrible eating habits. Oh, but word. now, now, in the morning, it's hot coffee perking. Yeah. Bacon and eggs sizzling. <laughs> yeah. Breakfast in bed. You're kidding. No. No. Breakfast in bed? And Marilyn's so considerate. When I serve her, she never fails to compliment me on my cooking. <laughs> she's got him house broke already. Yeah, she's got but you're not in that boat alone, good buddy. You know that. Oh, oh that's that right. Betty's got me so well trained. The other morning, she got up at 3 a.m. to get a glass of water. The time she got back, I had the bed made. <laughs> you're kidding. How you think Bob, it's a woman's world. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's what makes it so round. <laughs> that's very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they keep brainwashing us men like this, and pretty soon we're going to be thinking like them, you know? That could be. Can you imagine what it would be like if men started thinking and acting like the women? What, do you think it's ever going to come to that? Bob, it might. Can you picture in a locker room of a gym or something, two men talking and acting just like women. How do you mean? Well, now you know how they get together and they get together in the thing in the gym. Well, it could happen like that. Oh, Ed, 
afternoon, Mr. Ford. Uh, and you're a little late. Well, I know I am late, Ed, but the time I get Betty off to work and the kids off to school and get the house straightened up a little bit, the day's half gone. <laughs> Why is he always so late? He spends all his time in the barber shop. I don't know why, his hair is always a mess. <laughs> Hello, Bob. I'm sorry I'm late. That's all right. Hey, yeah? your hair looks great. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I found a new barber. Tell me. And he does wonders. I can bet you. You just feel it? I tell you, that is fine. Is that too much? That's great. Of course, you know, he says that my hair is very easy to manage, you know, lots of body to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're lucky. Mine's a mess. I can't do nothing with it. Nothing. <laughs> hey, is that a new suit? Yeah, do you, uh, you like it? Bob, huh? I gotta tell you, it's you. <laughs> it's you, Bob. <laughs> Well, I've got to tell you a secret. It's really not new at all. What? It's last year's model. I just had it, uh, well, you know, remade. You're kidding. No. Of course, I've got to buy all kinds of new accessories. You know, new hat, new yeah. tie, new tie pin, shirts. Yeah, yeah. When Marilyn gets the bill, she's going to have a fit. She'll ricochet off the wall. <laughs> you bet she will. I know what happens when they get the bill. Oh, dang it. What's the matter? <laughs> I got another run. <laughs> I can't keep myself in socks. You know, I don't seem to have that run problem. That Why? You know. I don't know. I guess my legs are smoother than yours. <laughs> well, you're well, oh, thanks, Dad. Hey, I'll get the tip. No, no, you let me get it. No, no, I'll get it. Ernie, Ernie, it's, it's my it's turn. It's my turn. I'll Ernie, let me get it. I'll get the tip. Wait no, let's split it. No, all right, we'll split the tip. Uh, I got my wallet oh, here. Right here. Stick around. Yeah. Just a minute, huh? I'll get the tip. Oh. <laughs> I've been hunting that a long time, man. <laughs> I know I have. Hey, there she is. I remember her. Remember that? Never mind now. You, Ernie, <laughs> you shouldn't have that. <laughs> oh, here's my nickel. Here, I got my nickel. Here, Here. it is. There you go. Live. <laughs> All right, buddy. Oh, I tell you. Oh, I don't know what tell you. you this is what we need. Well, I'm sorry I was late, too, but I just, the day just oh, ain't you late? long enough in it. Hey, you know I envy you. What do you mean? I say nobody fills out a t-shirt like you do. <laughs> I mean it. That's a fact. That's very nice of you. I tell you one thing, Marilyn says that I'm a perfect 44, 32, 38. But you know something? What? Until I started exercising, I had to wear pads. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I tell you, I, I've lost a little weight. I used to be a perfect 42, 42, 42. <laughs> I was my own padding. Hey, Bob Horton, how are you, Bobby? Yeah, how are you? Come on, Bernie. It's nice Joe. to see you, baby. Good to see you, Joe. You look great. Thanks, hey. Yeah, you look fine. Speaking of figures, have you ever gotten a good look at him in the steam room? <laughs> if you've ever been in the steam room with him, that's all you can get a look at. <laughs> I don't understand how some men just let themselves go. Well, now, I've talked to him, but yeah. he just refuses to wear an abdominal belt. I know. I know. Well, that's his wife Clara's problem, not yeah, ours. That's I know. That's and you know that I hear they're on the verge of, uh, you know what? You don't mean it. Yeah. Well, the trouble that we have to go through to keep our women happy. Oh, you are so right, Robert. Well, what do you say, Ernie? What? Let's get with it, huh? Oh. Oh.
You feel like working out? Truthfully, no. Me neither. Hey. Yeah? Let's take in a matinee. Well, you think we ought to? Let's go to one where we can have a good cry. I know just the theater. It's right next to a candy store. We can get a great big box of chocolate. Eat a box of chocolate. That's Let's go. We Here we go. That's what we need. Really? <laughs> You're about to see a flight test of a new executive aircraft, the Cessna 310F. Cessna engineers are going to photograph the operation of the 310's fast retracting landing gear from this 1961 Ford Sunliner, powered by a Thunderbird 390 special V8 engine. There's the signal, and there they go. A Ford V8 was picked for this assignment because a car was needed that could match the tremendous acceleration of this new aircraft. Here's all the reserve power you'll ever need to enter a fast-moving stream of traffic or for safe, sure passing. The camera rolls, held steady as a rock by Ford's Thunderbird wide tread design. This is Thunderbird V8 performance, created by Ford, world's most experienced builder of V8 engines. Try it yourself, behind the wheel of a 1961 Ford. See your Ford dealer. Tell you about the coming of the judgment. Well, well. Yes, I'm going to tell you about the coming of the judgment. Well, well. There's a better day a coming. Well, well. Yes, there's a better day a coming. Well, well. In that great hit in the morning. Maker of Falcon, the car that got the highest mileage ever obtained by a six or eight cylinder car in the 25 year history of the mobile gas economy run. Acrobats, clowns, and daredevil feats in the third Timex All Star Circus with host Joey e. Brown Saturday at 7 30 p.m., 6 30 Central Time on NBC.